Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, the Booking Magnet. Welcome back to another episode of Booking Magnet Magic. You're in for a treat today because I am interviewing Brittany Inge. She is a multi-hyphenate artist and activist. I've known her for years. She's so talented, so sweet, so beautiful. You've seen her on shows like The Passage, Atlanta, The Resident, Survivor's Remorse, and most recently, recently on Boomerang and Miss the Miss Pat show on BET Plus and Paramount Plus. So make sure you just get your get yourself settled in, get your popcorn, <laughs> get a snack and enjoy this interview because we really go deep into talking about how she got started, how she deals with the ebb and flows of this industry. And she gives some really great nuggets to inspire you in your journey in being an actor. So enjoy Brittany Inge. You can check out all her links in the show notes. See you soon. Bye. You are here. We are here. We are here. Okay. <laughs> in as real life as we can get right now in this moment. Yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> face to face, at least. I know. Where in the world at this moment are you? In LA, New York, Atlanta? I'm in Atlanta at the moment. Okay. okay. Yeah. I know. Jet set life, y'all. You got to check with your friends. Where Where are they? <laughs> Listen, yeah, you got to check. Where in the world actually are you? Okay. Right now, when you step outside. Like, right. Right. Oh my gosh, thank you for saying yes. I know we said this right before I hit record, but thank you truly for saying yes. I know we're all busy, but this series is really important to me. This booking magnet magic, as you know, you see me, I'm mm -hmm. calling myself a booking magnet. I believe in speaking life into our own careers love and our it. lives. And I love just being the fly on the wall and hearing stories from, from artists who are doing it and who are showing up and who I know have had a journey and a story that will inspire people, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So for those of you, those, I know those, some of you are gonna be listening to this, some of you are gonna watch this. You should watch it because we cute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, for those of you who don't, who don't know you, how did you even get started in the entertainment industry? Mm -hmm. Well, I've been performing my whole life. You know, I've always been uh, an artistic kid, uh, a ham, as my, as my family would describe it. Um, and I grew up singing a lot. That was my main focus. Like as a kid, I just wanted to be Whitney Houston. That was my <laughs> goal. Well, <of> life. <laughs> big, big. I mean, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, yeah. dream. <laughs> if I'm gonna dream, it's gonna be Whitney. Okay. Um, and so I ended up going to Duke Ellington School of the Arts, which is in Washington D.C. And uh, that was like my high school experience. And I focused on vocal music there while also just doing high school stuff. And then I went to Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia and tried to major in like psychology or do something practical. Mm -hmm. um, but when I got there, music was still tugging at me. And so I got my degree in music. And that served me very well because when I graduated, there weren't a lot of opportunities in Atlanta. Um, like the tax thing had just happened, the tax break, like that was yeah. bringing all the productions to Atlanta. But I wasn't in that world yet, so I wasn't even aware fully of what was going on around me. But I knew I wanted to be an artist. And so I started looking for musical opportunities, and the first ones I found were musical theater opportunities. Okay. And, you know, I was going to these musical theater auditions and bombing the the theatrical part I was singing well like that I got oh, that part nice. down but when it was time to do the theatrical pieces I was bombing and I was like I know I have a little bit of a natural knack for the theatrics and the theatrical but I'm I'm missing the fundamentals the tools and I didn't want to rely on my quote-unquote natural ability so I started going to classes and like I just looked all over Atlanta. I took classes all over Atlanta and started doing community theater, which felt like its own kind of Me grass. Too. Me yes. too. <laughs> which feels kind of like a grad school experience in a way because like it, it's fully immersive. Because when you do community theater, you, you, you're you not just acting, right? You got to help with the costumes, right. and the lights, <laughs> and with the, you know what I mean? You're involved in every aspect of the creation of the show because they ain't got no money. So you're right. just... <laughs> doing everything but it was really that helped me really get bit by the bug it ignited something in me like oh wow this is what it takes to piece a story together and build a character from the ground up and I just became obsessed and really again dove into classes 
-hmm. and then graduated to like professional theater, regional theater, and eventually got an agent and started auditioning for television and film. But that was a several years, Mm -hmm. years long process. Gotcha. And when you finally got your first like theatrical or commercial agent in Atlanta, Mm -hmm. um, was it in Atlanta? Was it in New York? It was in Atlanta. It was in Atlanta. Did you, at that point, making the transition from theater to, to TV film, mm-hmm. how was that transition for you? Did you, Were you still like, oh, well, this is new? And then re, getting reacclimated to that? Like, what was that transition like? Um, the transition was exciting because I felt like, oh, wow, like uh, there's a wealth of opportunities here. And, you know, when I started getting auditions for like show names that I recognized, I was like, oh, this is really real you know I don't care if this character only has three lines like this is exciting and I felt the transition was pretty natural because my personal belief is like when you come from the theater you you got the chop you know like you know what to do you you've had to hone so many different parts of yourself and your instrument Mm -hmm. that it was like this theater audition is three pages but when I'm in plays I have to Script, whole script. I mean, the whole, yeah, I'm like, I have to know the whole script top to bottom, legit. Even if they're not my life, I know everything that's going on at all times. And so I'm like, this is cake, you know? I did feel at times that I did have to make that slight adjustment that you always hear people talking about, like theater to TV, like bringing it down. Mm -hmm. Um, But it it wasn't a huge adjustment for me because I do live by the school of thought uh, that Denzel Washington loves to preach, which is that there's no film or TV acting. There's only the truth. Yeah. Telling the truth, you know, and the camera will pick up the truth. Just like when you're on stage, the audience can see if you're living and breathing and walking in the truth. So it wasn't a huge adjustment, but just some small technical things. Of course, I had to learn to adjust. Yeah, I love that you like I similarly to me, I tried to go to school for such and such. <laughs> but then when that tug, that tug, that tug, you know, yeah. and, and I'm glad you listened to that voice. You know, I mean, I've loved having this conversation with so many artists during doing this uh this series. And what I'm curious about for you is I heard the Whitney part, the Whitney Houston, but <laughs> when you watch as a child, even to now. Mm-hmm. What are some of the things that stand out when you're watching a performance, when you see someone, what are the things that draw you into to a performance? You know, I think what draws me in more than anything is when I can tell that the actor is really listening to the person like that they're in the scene with their scene partner. I can mm-hmm. tell that they are honed in and it feels spontaneous and and grounded and real because they are so zeroed in on the person or the moment in front of them because I don't it may not even be a person Um, but that level of just focus and being present it always draws me in because I'm like Oh wow, there. Yeah. You know? I'm, like, in front of a yeah I'm, in. In. I'm like, oh, they are in it. And they're not just in it, they are experiencing it. It, mm-hmm. It's always refreshing to me to see an actor experience, not mm-hmm. just like say or do or recite or, you know, like really experience that that draws me in. I hope I explained that well. Yeah, it does. To me, that makes me even think of when I watch dancers. You watch some of the early dancers, honey. You'd be like, yes. you're telling this whole story with your body and your mo. We can five of us can do the same steps. But what you're given, there's something it, deeper there. Exactly. You're ex- you're in it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that. I'm so, I'm so with you there. Yeah. You know, with which gig for you, paid or unpaid, mm-hmm. solidified, that you were good. I'm good at this. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Oh, wow. Christine, that's a good question. I'm like, really like, hmm, okay, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> it gets everybody, but if we think, we know the one that made the, the, the That track. made us know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. So, it, okay. I kind of have two answers. Sure. Okay. I did a play. Uh, at the top of 2018, it was a two-hander. And for those listening who may not know what that is, it just means there's only two actors in the entire show. Could be an hour and a half show, two hours. It's just two people on stage. Um, And 
it was just some of the most beautiful material I had ever, you know, read, auditioned for, and then I ended up getting it. And just the process, the director, uh, his name's Che Walker, I have to say it like that because he's from, <laughs> he's from London, um, but he's a brilliant writer, director, and he, it was the U.S. premiere of it, and he came from London to direct it. That's how important the story was to him. And just that experience doing that show, um, learning from Che, work, even getting feedback from him and and understanding like what I was doing and what I was bringing to the character, her name's Vinette, what I was building in Vinette that he had never seen. I was like, oh, I, I do know what I'm doing. Like, mm-hmm. I do this, like, I'm, I'm good at this. Um, but I think the first time I ever really felt, this is the second part of the answer, felt seen in that way of not just me knowing it, but felt like somebody else really recognized that in me was on the set of Boomerang. Mm. Uh, and working with Dime Davis, who was our, she was our co-showrunner season two, but season one, she directed the majority of the episodes. And she really was just the backbone of that show, to be quite honest. And Mm. she really saw me in a way that I felt like I wasn't being seen anywhere prior to, or even on that set at the time. And I was just like, yeah, I really appreciated that. And it was a reminder, like, I'm good at this. I was literally born to do this. I'm a storyteller and I got this. What does seeing you look like? What does that feel like for you? Oh, um, how, does that, how does that manifest in, in something tangible? Yeah, what it looks like is <laughs> actually not paying attention to anything that you can actually see. <laughs> that's what it means to see me. Um, and so, you know, so often in this industry, because I'm a black woman, I have brown skin, I'm curvy, I have hips, you know, there's so many things that I think make people want to put me in a box. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, yeah. And I know you identify with that. And I, I am so much more than that. Um, just in who I am as a person, but also in my gifts, in my skill set. I'm so much more than the funny best friend or the, you know, I, I am, I'm a leading lady. And I say, that humbly. did you hear it? <laughs> I say that humbly, but honestly, I am, I'm a leading lady. And I say that first and foremost, because I am the lead in my own life. Yes. You know what I mean? And it, it's like the storytellers, the writers and producers of these shows, no shade, obviously, but you know, you write these stories and then you always cast the, the curvy girl or the brown girl as the, like the best friend mm-hmm. as if we aren't the leads of our own lives every Woo! day. That's a whole hallelujah. This is a, that I could stop this right now. You just it's, preached the whole word to my spirit. Listen, I'm serious. It's un- It's like I am the lead in my own life. Literally, I'm the leading lady. I'm the leading lady of my household. I'm somebody's wife. I, you know, I will be somebody's mother. I, you know, but I'm more than that because somebody is also my husband. It's not that I'm somebody's wife. Somebody is my husband. Mm-hmm. I am the lead. You know what I mean? Um, and so it's just like, uh, so that's what it means to see me just to get back to the answer. Like it means to see what I really have to offer outside of whatever box you may automatically want to put me in just based on preconceived notions. We all have them. We're human yeah. beings, you know, but it, what it means is seeing beyond that. That's what it means to see me. I love that. And I love that in Boomerang with those of you who haven't seen it. Um, I loved watching your character getting to evolve from season one to the second season and just getting to explore more. And like you said, more the depth behind the story and even the roles you've had a chance to play since, I think that speaks volumes to that. Right on the same uh, kind of wavelength before we move on, talking about what draws you to people, Mm -hmm. what do you know for sure makes you magnetic? What is the thing that you know people love about you when they see you? or experience you. Mm-hmm. For me, I know that I'm light. I know that I'm magnetic. I know when I walk in a room, I take up space, I take up time, not in a conceited way, but just because I know that I'm a beautiful reflection of God and I know yes. you like the light, yes. right? I know you were attracted to my passion and my and my 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 zest and zeal for life and my craft. Like I know, yes. I know that. Yes. So what do you know for sure? I feel like Oprah, what do you know for sure? I know, what do you know for sure? <laughs> 
mother. Oh, um, you know, similar to your answer, to be honest, uh, I know that there's a light that exists within me and that I naturally exude. Uh, and I know that there's a warmth that, mm-hmm. that I have within me that nobody can recreate. You know, when I step into a room, I bring that with me everywhere I go. And I think that draws people to me. It has my entire life, not only as an artist, honestly, but just as a person, <laughs> uh, you know, even with friendships and, and well, I'm talking about when I was a young kid, just having to deal with, uh, Sometimes it showed up in like a negative form, you know, of jealousy, but it also showed up at times like with parents saying like, I really like for my daughter to hang out with your daughter, you know, to my mom. It, it's yeah. always just been a thing uh, that's taken me a while to put language to and own. So it's actually very funny that you're asking me this and I'm being challenged to put words to it. Um, but in terms of what makes me magnetic as an artist and as an actor, um, I think just my my full blown commitment to the story. You know, when I even just when I audition, I I zero in. I do whatever I can to make like to breathe life into what I'm doing. It's never it's never going to be one note. It's never going to be flat. You know, it's always going to have that light and that warmth and that spunk that I naturally have. I'm going to bring that to what I do. Yeah, I love that. And the reason why I love asking this question, and for those of you listening and watching it, it's really important for you to sit and think about what you bring to the table and what makes you magnetic. Because I promise you, yeah. you have that. Each and every one of us yeah. has that thing, right? I always tell people, you don't got to reinvent the wheel. Just put some rims on it. And guess what? You are the rims. You are one of a kind, unique, wonderful, never duplicated, right? Yeah. So when you understand that, it takes, and I know you also have started mentoring some actors when you when you do have the time and pockets in your schedule. Yeah. And, and I'm sure you hear this is that thing of, I want to make my audition stand out. How can I be different? How can I? And I'm like, do the work, do the, do the work, you know, to do, follow your process, whatever that is. But also remember what's going to make it stand out automatically is you. Exactly. Literally that. <laughs> I, like I, I have a, my manager who I just signed with. She's awesome. She was saying to me uh, recently, she was like, yeah, I just want to make sure that, you know, like, you can always bring you to, to your tapes. Like there's, there's all, there's something special about you that only you will bring. And I'm like, Oh yeah. I, I know. Like I just, <laughs> I just signed with her. So we were just like having a conversation. And I was like, yeah. Oh yes. I know. That's kind of one of my like tricks up my sleeve. It's always going to, I'm a character actor. I believe as my, as much as I'm also a leading lady. So I will immerse myself in whatever the character needs to be. But at the same time, there's going to be an element of only like me, only what I can bring to it. it. It's impossible for there not to be. I am what makes it unique. My approach to it, you and I could do the same audition. It's going to look different. They're both going to be fabulous. They're going to be different. And that is what makes all of us so special. I, I just wish everyone would embrace that. Like there's no yeah. real hidden tricks to, oh, how can I make my audition stand out? Let me drink this cup of water. Right. You know, it's like, no, just just by being you yes. and embracing that though. That's the thing too. That that is why I'm I I, I ask this question all every time so people can keep hearing it because yes. it, let's be real, it comes down to worthiness. Yes. Not believing you're worthy, not believing yes. you're good enough, all of that. And when you're and that's why I know we're about to go deep. We're about, this is a great segue anyway, but yeah. if we don't do the inner work of for ourselves is gonna it's gonna be a tough ride yes in this industry because you will you will encounter enough too many enough people like you need to lose weight You're too tall too short too dark too fat yep. here's too pinky here's too straight like you're gonna hear enough of that so yeah. you knowing who you are and loving yourself we both know an amazing man named Freddie Hendricks, and yeah. he always talks about loving yourself. And he, he told me one time, Christine, if you don't love yourself, you cannot fully love your craft. You have to do that work. Yes. And so if you're listening to this and this is making you shifting your seat and it's uncomfortable, then we found the spot that you could still use some, some work on. And that's yeah. okay. But know that that is, that is a huge part because, you know, I want to talk about 
you're working a lot now. We see you all over our television on this hit show, Miss Pat, Boomerang, all the things in between. Go to her IMDb. You can check her out. All the links will be in the show notes. So don't worry. But in true actor fashion, <laughs> artist fashion, mm-hmm. it's not always, it's not always, and it's up, and it's up, and it's up. Okay. And it's in our minds, you know, that's what, that's what we're <laughs> focused on. Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, The Booking Magnet. I am so excited to invite you to our next event. It is called Booking Magnet Live. It's happening in Atlanta, Georgia on July 15th and 16th, 2022. You're going to spend two days surrounded with actors oh, just like you. Actors who want more, actors who are looking for a safe space, a sanctuary, a safe haven to express themselves, to learn, to grow, and to connect. So I'm excited for you to experience that. Make sure you join us July 15th and 16th. You can click the link below, and I'm so excited to see you there. Can you talk a little bit about the ebbs and flows of this industry and how you personally deal, work through, process that. Because look, and I know some of you are watching and listening and think, well, she on a hit show and you on this show, Christine. Yes, but there are times when we are not working. There are times when it is quiet. And there are times when the role that you desired went to someone else because that wasn't yours. Right. And it can be really easy to be like, oh, y'all don't get it because you're working now. So talk a little bit about that and your experience in the, your career thus far. Oh, well, the first thing I want to say, kind of going back to just what we last spoke about, worthiness and also like loving yourself, but knowing yourself. Mm-hmm. If you don't know yourself and you're not in touch with who you are, then you cannot put on the skin of another person comfortably. Right. I just wanted to, yeah, say that, like add that to what we were talking about, but it also applies to this question. Um, Knowing yourself, knowing your worth, walking in that even when things don't look the way you want them to. (laughs) Um, It, you know, the ebb and flow is difficult. It's difficult. Mm-hmm. And I don't have a better word for it. I know that if you pursue this craft and this career, you have to love it. I yes. always tell people, if you're just trying to be on TV, there are other ways to do that than being an actor. <laughs> I for tell people all the time, like, if you just try to be somewhere, be seen, be on TV, you can do that. I'm not knocking whatever it is that you yeah. want, but there are other ways to do it than being an actor. I promise you. Because we're doing this because we love it. Yes. There's no other. I I would not recommend this to anyone. (laughs) To anyone with any level of sanity, I would not recommend. Okay? So that's number one. Um, It's... Facts. Facts. Okay? I am literally, even now, in the midst of an ebb and flow. Like, to be really honest. So we just started season two of the Miss Pat show. You know, I just filmed at the very end of January. I think we started. Haven't gotten my, you know, first couple of checks yet. Really need them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> with, uh, yeah, is everybody yeah. ears perked up? Really yeah. need them. Mm-hmm. Right now, today, really need them. Um, because it's been an ebb and flow. It's been a, a slow season. Obviously, the pandemic has not helped. You know, last year I got really close. When I say really close, because I know people like to say they got close to stuff. I'm not saying that in a shady way, but like, yeah. I mean, really cl- like had to sign the test option contract. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. You be you be spending that money as soon as you, you your name your name is on the paper. You like, ooh. Okay, because why would you have me sign it and let me <laughs> see what I'm going to make? When yeah. there's a chance I won't get the job. Right. For those of you who are newer to the industry, before you like get a series regular role or something really big, and it's down to you and one or two people, they make you sign the whole contract. You negotiate it, your deal. You see what you would make every episode. You are, you can calculate that time, the number of episodes for the season. You sign that before you even go into for that final audition. Yes. All that is on your brain. The stakes are high. I just want you to know that for those of you who are real new and don't yes. know what you're talking about. Okay, continue. Yes. And so, <laughs> you know, that happened for me at, at the end of last year. And it was, even though I did not get the job, and obviously at the time, 
hearing that I didn't get it was very difficult and there were tears and, and all the things. But even though I did not get the job, that opportunity was so great for a lot of other reasons. The people that I connected with who now know me by name and, you know, my quote went up just to be real, you know, all of that, it matters. And so that's great. But when you've already been in a, a kind of dry season and you get so close to something like that and you still don't get it, you're talking about heartbroken. You're talking about why do I even do this? Questioning everything, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so my answer, if, if this even is one, is that it's difficult. And how I deal with it is by remembering who I am, remembering why I do this, and having a support system, you know, a village, that, that definitely helps. But I have to really work hard and meditate and journal and, you know, find the right kinds of music to listen to sometimes to motivate myself and remind myself who I am and that I'm worthy with or without. Yeah. And that's the end of the sentence. Like I'm worthy with or without. And you could put anything at the end of that sentence. And that's what keeps me going. And I, and I know that I'm great. And I, again, I say that humbly, it does, whether I get the job or not, I know that I'm great. I know what I bring to the table. So I just have to walk confidently in that and know that whoever has the, the wisdom to hire me will be better for it. Your show will be better for it. Your production uh -huh. will be better for it. The, the environment on your set will be better for it because I can own what I bring. I love that. I love that. And what I'm hearing, and I just had, I just interviewed another actor, Dave Pileggi. We were talking about the same question. And what I'm hearing that's in agreement is honoring the feelings. Yes. Because it's so easy for people to say to us as artists, well, you get the next one. That wasn't for you, blah, blah, blah. What, what, you can't miss, you good, you good. And then maybe two more auditions come in and you just move on, move on. And I did a whole podcast episode once, Brittany, about grieving. Yes. And how as artists, we're not often given the space or give ourselves the space to grieve the loss of the roles, the loss of even when you're on a show and the family, the, the family that gets built on that set to survive, to make sure that the, the uh, energy is great on set, that there's rapport, and then it's gone. Season over, deuces. Yeah. Maybe it still comes back, maybe it doesn't. Loss. Yeah. Loss. We pour ourselves. This is one of the rare industries. I was joking about this with my students. We do all the work without ever getting even the job. We do the job first. We do the job first for free. <laughs> Imagine and somebody said, hey, Brittany, I need you to, you know, the Marta bus in Atlanta, just drive. We need you to go ahead and drive the whole route. Drive, no, drive it for like four or five hours. Yeah. Yeah. And then. We'll see. We'll let you know if we're going to hire you to be the driver. We'll let you know. Just drive around for four or five hours, drop these people off at all their stops, and we'll let you know if we're going to pay you for what you just did and give you the job moving forward. We'll Correct. let you know. We'll let you know. And hopefully, once you get the job, you keep the job. Yeah. 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 Hopefully that happens. No. Yeah. Listen, that what's coming up for me for those, for especially for newer actors, is you know people get fired at table reads, so <laughs> they do. It happens. Is this is, this industry you have to love it? But what I what I'm hearing about is honoring the feelings because if we just push them down like they didn't happen, like that's not fair to us. Like because yeah. we cared about it, we it's put true. if we didn't care about it, we wouldn't go through the process of auditioning. Yeah, yes, and true. doing all this beautiful work we talk about doing. And I think another piece to this, and thank you for being so transparent, and I, I know this is serving somebody. I know this is for you. I know it's for you. You talk about, you know, again, and this, I'll be real, I'll speak to my truth. I remember working my nine to five in Atlanta at, my, at the nonprofit I work for. Yes. And I'm like, one day I'm gonna be a guest. I would see guest star people who was a guest. I'm like, oh, you're gonna quit this job when I get that guest star. <laughs> Until I became a guest star, I was like, I can't quit. Right. What's that? What's that? What happened? That's right. Okay. And you don't know the difference between a one day guest star and the and the day player and then the top of show and like yes. all the differences. And so what I what I wanted to just shed shine a light on just for hair more is you may be working, but once you get to a certain level, you know, 
But this is why I believe we need multiple streams of income yeah. because you, you know, you can't, well, you can, but I'm going to just say for me, like, I don't see myself being on a hit show and then going to work at Macy's at night. Right. You can. And I kept my day job for a long time before I decided I, ha- I knew I had enough in yeah. the bank and I could sustain myself because there's no shade in keeping any work. Lord knows. Oh. I, Cause I kept always kept the job. Yes. Okay? And, but you talk, but you know, the importance though of, of budgeting, because you know, the reality is we don't know when our next job is coming. No, no. You know? And so what are some of the, did anybody pour into you? Did you have any mentors or friends who put a bug in your ear just about how to approach keeping yourself on track financially. Like, I I don't think enough people talk about that reality. Yeah. Um, So thank God I have a mother who is very good with money. She's very uh, financially smart. She always says, you know, I don't know everything, but I'm going to tell you everything that I do know. (laughs) Um, And she has been the person that's really always kind of kept me grounded when it came to money, kept me responsible uh, with just having jobs like before acting work. Right. Um, and so she has been a great help with that. Just that voice in my ear, even if I'm not talking to her directly, of mm-hmm. make sure you're putting money away and make sure you're, you know, doing what needs to be done. I think it is important that people, I think it's Yvette Nicole Brown. She always says, she tells people like, really, especially if you're an actor to live below your means. And we hear that all the time. But she's like, if you're a co-star, you need to be living like, you know, an extra, like you work in background, right? If you're a guest star, you need to live like a co-star. If you're a series regular, you need to live like a guest star because you don't, like you just said, you don't know when the job is going to, to flip. Yeah. You don't know if the show is going to come back, even after you do one season as a series regular, you don't know. You know, I did two seasons on Boomerang, uh, but I only did one season officially as a series regular. Mm-hmm. One, and the show is over. So if I had not been smart with that money, you know, I'd probably be, I'm not that it's great. Like I said, I need my my eggs right now, but I'd probably be in a worse situation than at least I'm able to sit here and I I know I got food to eat and I have a car and, you know, because it takes being responsible and not getting too ahead of yourself. And, you know, even what we were talking about with the test option, like when you see the contract and you, you start mm-hmm. counting the dollars, sure. But even when I saw that contract and I was counting my dollars, it wasn't so I could go out and be crazy yeah. and, you know, blow the money. It was so I could do some of the things that I know I need to do. Yeah. Right. And I knew that this money would help me take care of that. I could put some away. I could invest. I could, you know, that's where my, when I do see those dollar amounts, that's mm-hmm. where my mind goes. But that's because someone instilled that in me. Yeah. And I think it's important just for, for all artists, because so many people you hear about in the music industry, our industry, all the time. you know, you get your first big opportunity, your first big checks and people blow it. They go crazy. And so I think that's just financial literacy and like emotional maturity when it comes to finances is an important thing for for all actors and all artists to learn honestly yeah absolutely and thank you for sharing that and and for those of you who feel like you need some help in that area you know the actors fund um has some really great free resources on managing your money because a lot of times it's the conversation we don't want to have as artists we just want to only stay in artist brain but yeah. remember that we are operating as a business this is a whole business entity going on on here and and yeah it's about thinking ahead um we're gonna wrap in a second and again make sure you connect with Brittany everywhere when we put all the links and all the things below <laughs> but this is what I've been ending on with every interview I want you to think about there's an actor right now watching this or listening to this maybe seasoned been in the industry for 15 20 years or brand new still working their job maybe they're starting over and it just feels like they're never going to get a break. They had a break, the breaks stopped coming or they just feeling frustrated starting and they just ready to throw in the towel, but they love it. There's the tug, the pull. Mm-hmm. What word of, if you could give them a virtual hug, word of advice, what would that be to that actor? Mm. Wow. It's hard. I'm pausing because I was probably in that place mentally myself a month ago, Mm -hmm. you know, as recently as that. So 
I'm trying to remember or feel what I said to myself then that got me to a, the, the better place that I'm in right now. Um, I think one, if you love it, then honor that feeling. Just like we were talking about honoring, feel honoring the grief, the loss of opportunities or whatever the case, but you have to also honor that you love it. Mm -hmm. You have to acknowledge that, you have to accept that, you have to embrace that and then decide what that means for you. You know, if you're gonna, I, I worked a day job for many years while, while pursuing this. Um, and sometimes me wondering if I should still have one, but there's, <laughs> there's no way I could sustain that with yeah. my current life. But my point is, remember why you love it. <laughs> and also remember that if you can persevere, if you, if you knew what was on the other side of your perseverance, you would tell yourself to keep going, mm. right? Mm. Because you can't, no, you can't see, you have to allow your faith to do that, that push for you. And, and I hate to say it like this, and also know that as you progress on and you persevere, the pool is gonna get smaller. Because mm. for every you that decides to stick to it, there are 10 other people who are gonna quit. Mm -hmm. that's just the truth and I, I don't like to say that too much it's, because, it's real it's yeah because I don't want to like t there's nothing wrong with with quitting to be honest because you have to some people quit because like emotion you know their emotional emotional their mental stability they can't handle it and I deeply understand that deeply yeah. even some yeah. casting directors that I met many who are like I couldn't do it absolutely <laughs> Agents, I mean, yeah, all sorts of people who are now in different facets of the industry once tried to be actors and they could not handle it. And I understand that. And so that is my point in sharing that piece too. When you know if you can just continue to persevere for every one you that sticks to it, there are going to be 10 people that quit. And that pool is, it's going to get smaller and your work is going to continue to grow and evolve and elevate and stand out. Yeah. And, and the journey will continue. Yeah, the, that's the journey. And what I love about even your response right now, and I hope you all are catching this, if you're watching this, it's daily work. Yes. Brittany sharing. She's like, I was here a month ago. I, when I wrote my book, those of you who don't have it playing small, yes. I have it here because I'm about to mail it to somebody. I tell people all the time, yeah, I'm glad you enjoy it, but I wrote it for me. Listen. I wrote it for me because listen. I needed to remind myself. Period. And even like to what you're saying too, to your question, I think Lena, Lena Waits, she always says, your dream is not the promised land. And I love that because if people think that, you know, a, a newer actor who's feeling discouraged or a veteran actor who may be feeling discouraged, if I could just get that, that next thing or you could get the next thing. That does not mean it's going to be the answer to A, B, C, D. You know, it's not gonna answer all of your questions or your problems or solve everything. It's going to just be what it is. Yeah. Another opportunity, another job. Yes, another chance to do your craft and do it to the best of your ability. And those are blessings. What they are not are like cure-alls. It's not, because what we also know, we have enough proof of it. And if you really look at your own life, you can attest to this. Someone I heard, I forgot who said this this week because I'm always pouring into myself. Mm -hmm. The top of your mountain is the bottom of someone else's. Yeah. And the top of your mountain also becomes the bottom of your next mountain. That's right. So the grind and the, because we're driven people, right? Because yes. you're not going to be happy just with that. Oh, I got that coaster. I'm good. No, you gotta no want, you're not. You're going to want more. You're going to want more. Never. Trust me. I was, I was that person like, oh, if I could just get my first coaster, I like, boom, did that. Now what? Right. <laughs> now what yeah and that's why I'm so I'm such an advocate of sit, sitting in the celebrations my students I mentor the actors I mentor I'm a broken record I'm like we gotta let's just celebrate we yeah. can't build a success we don't acknowledge let's celebrate yes because you're gonna and I have to do that I did that at the top of the year you know I sat with my my journal of, you know like January 2nd or 3rd and I had a quiet moment 
And I had, I said, Christine, I need you to sit here and write your accomplishments. What are you proud of for this past year? Because I, you know me, I'm driven. I'm looking for the next thing. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I have to sit and be like, oh, I did that. Sometimes I'll just take a day, y'all. Y'all can take this how you want. I'll just sit and watch all my footage. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, that was, I like that role. That was fun. I want to yes. do a role like that. And look at my work. Yeah. Yeah. And tell yourself, good job, because sometimes you may be the only one who's going to say that. Yes, and you if you're not rooting for you, then, you know, well, how can you expect anyone else to root for you? I'm, now, this is really transparent with you sharing, like, taking and looking at all your footage. I was going through my phone yesterday, uh, you know, getting rid of photos, and I came across a screenshot that I took of an email from my agent. She had sent me a message. She said, your work was stunning on this, Brittany. Like, wow. Mm-hmm. Right? She was like, I just, you know, job well done. Your work was stunning. And I knew the audition that that email was in reference to. And I, I was like, oh, wow. I, okay, let me pull it up. I pulled up the audition, watched it. Christine, I, <laughs> I was moved to tears. I don't, I've never in my life had that reaction to myself. Mm-hmm. I, watch, I watch great actors all the time. You know, you watch a story, you're in it. You're, I was moved to tears in part by the work, but also I was like, I was having a moment like, Brittany, you you really are born for this. You really do yes. this. You do not need to doubt yourself. So the tears were also that, you know, me coming out of, like I described the moment that I was in just last month. Watching that was really a reminder and a grounding moment for me of just like, you're gonna be okay. Yeah. You're doing this for a reason. You're in this for a reason. God did not bring you this far to leave you. And you got it. You yeah. know, you got it. And like, so I'm just sharing that to say, which that's, I would normally never say something like that. I love it because you're, I, I, I was telling this to a student, I know we're going to go, but mm-hmm. we have to acknowledge a job well done. Yeah. Right before, right before the Christmas season, I had like seven auditions, like do in two days, like, mm-hmm. you know, 10 page, 12 page, wow. like, j- and didn't get none, not a call back, no booking. Wow. But when I tell you, I was feeling so dang on good yes. with the work that I had put out. I had fun creating these characters. And I was like, oh, I was like, I'm working this muscle. Like, I don't know what's coming, but this is me put, this is me working this muscle. And I don't, this is not just some woo woo talk. I'm serious. Like, I was like, of course, of course, we all want a job, but I was like, yeah. More than anything, I, I am, I'm built for this. Yes. And it felt so good to see that from, and I, whether somebody tells me that or not. I'm going to tell me. And yeah. whether a job comes of it or not, I know that I'm great. Like, that's the thing. I Yes, I want the job, but I also want to be great. I yeah. want to feel good about the work that I put into the world. Like you said, th- that feeling is better than anything I feel. you. I want to bottle that feeling up, you know, all the time. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Juicy, juicy, juicy. Y'all, as you can see, like we fired up about this. Yes. And we go, we pass them. You, you can borrow some of our, our good, good energy if you need it. Because you, <laughs> cause you're gonna need it for this industry. But just keep loving it. Keep loving yourself. Brittany, thank you so much for spending time with me. Thank you for being transparent. I know we're gonna, I know when this airs, you're gonna get comments by like, wow. I can't believe like that really touched me because we get those all the time. So thank you. We're going to keep watching you on our screen and our stage. And uh, I will see you soon, hopefully in person one day soon. Yes, hopefully. (laughs) All right. Bye-bye. Bye.